This week, join me as I pursue one of the world's most intriguing mysteries, the legend of the lost tribes of Israel. The Bible's Book of Kings tells us that the northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed by a brutal Assyrian invasion in the 8th century BC, and more than land was lost. Ten of the twelve tribes of Israel would vanish into history and myth. But one of these lost tribes may have survived in the unlikeliest of places. Could ancient Jews have journeyed from the Middle East to South Africa? And could these African bloodlines reach back to King Solomon and before? To find out, I'm going to trace their journey. I'll brave an Israeli war zone, fly over the African bush, and explore a 3,000-year-old battlefield and ancient cities of stone. We're digging for the truth, and we're going to extremes to do it. They're a lot bigger than the scorpions in Utah. Oh, don't worry. They get much bigger. Look at the one at your foot. This is the Limpopo River, the northern border of South Africa. I've come to hear the story of a local group of people with astonishing ties to the story of the lost tribes of Israel, the Lemba. Today, they live only a few miles away from here, but this would have been the final challenge in an epic journey across deserts, oceans, and jungles. I'm Josh Bernstein, and my goal is to follow in their footsteps to determine if this fascinating story could possibly be true. Today, the Lemba are mainly concentrated in the shadow of the South Pansberg Mountains in the far north of South Africa. To the casual observer, they look and live much like any other traditional Southern African community. But if you scratch below the surface, there are some intriguing differences. And here I am in South Africa, and there are these men wearing skull caps and tully shoulder wraps. You would see this in any synagogue in America or Israel, but I never thought I'd see it here in South Africa. I want to find out how these people seem to have Jewish customs. Samuel Moeti is president of the Lemba Cultural Association. Pleasure. So, I'll be honest, I, I came into this village and the first word I heard was shalom. Yes. A Hebrew word. Yes. How is that possible? How is it that the, the Lemba is speaking Hebrew? The Lembas are the original Hebrews, and they were scattered, as you know, and they crossed into Africa. So they were scattered all over. So in South Africa, in many parts of South Africa, you find the Lembas who are actually Hebrews. Hebrews. So the Lembas claim to be descendants of ancient Israelites? Not claim. They are. They are. They are. Okay. We are the original African Hebrew. We are scattered all over. Can you give me a few examples of some of the Jews? Yes, we don't partake of pork. Okay. We don't mix milk with meat. It sounds to me like the Lemba have a, a unique culture surrounded by others who do not practice the same way. That is correct. We always believe that the Jewish people who live all over the world are our brothers because we come from the same root. Could it be that the Lemba are a lost tribe of Israel? To answer the question, I have to turn the clock back some 2,700 years to the time of the mighty Assyrians. Back then, Assyria was the greatest imperial power the world had ever seen. And it had set its expansionist sights on the northern kingdom of Israel. The northern kingdom, composed of ten tribal groups, was completely destroyed. Any surviving Israelites were enslaved and taken to Assyria what is now the nation-states of Iraq and Syria. Little is known about the fate of these lost tribes, but for 2,700 years, hope remained. Could the Israelites have regrouped? Could some have escaped their captors and fled? Could a group of wandering Israelites have survived the elements and continued on, faithful in some land far from home? Jerusalem. There's no place more associated with the Jewish people. But as I walk through its narrow streets, I can't help but appreciate how deeply connected the people of many faiths feel to this city, and how millions of people around the world have a connection to this place, including me. My father was born here, and I probably have ancestors who were here when the Assyrians broke up this land.
one of my relatives has told me that my grandparents are buried in this very graveyard on the Mount of Olives. I've never visited their graves before, but I've decided to try and find them. So after 10 minutes of wandering, I found them. So this is my grandmother. This is my grandfather. This is my great grandmother. My great grandfather. This actually means something to me. There's a connection for me that speaks to what the significance of heritage is. And for the Lemba, I understand why they might be interested in claiming some historical identity with Jerusalem. This is only two generations ago. For them, it's thousands of generations. People have claimed to have found lost tribes all over the world, from Siberia to Australia. Some of the first Europeans to land in the Americas assumed the natives were lost tribes and even tried to communicate with them in Hebrew. Historian Hillel Halkin has written a book about the lost tribes and thinks that they could still exist today. Hillel, why are you so passionate about the lost tribes of Israel? The lost tribe myth really is, uh, in, through Jewish eyes, among other things, a story of tough Jews living still uh, like the Jews' biblical ancestors, independent, warrior-like, fearless, all the things that Jews in the diaspora over the ages generally were not. Was this the first Jewish diaspora then? Yes. So we have some archaeological evidence besides Syrian inscriptions to show that these Israelites were deported to various parts of the Assyrian Empire. But after that, they disappear from history. What's the big deal with being a lost tribe? What is the attraction for these people to claim, I was one of the lost tribes of Israel? Well, the big deal, you have to understand, is not so much that people are claiming to be lost tribes, but the fact that the Christian and the Jewish world have been looking for hundreds or even thousands of years for the lost tribe. It's the search for the lost tribes that is really the historically fascinating phenomenon. By now, the trail left by the lost tribes has gone cold. But perhaps the Lemba's oral history, handed down over the generations, can help us make a connection to the lost tribes of Israel. The Lemba's story goes like this. Thousands of years ago, they were forced out of Israel and settled in a place called Sena, which is believed to be the present-day Yemen. There, they lived as traders and craftsmen until war or natural disaster pushed them across the Red Sea and into Africa. Then began a slow migration south. Along the way, according to the Lemba, they built great stone cities. It's a claim that's fascinated archaeologists. Why? Because the ruins of ancient stone cities still exist in southern Africa today. It's also where I need to be exploring next. I had no idea how big this site was. I'm on the trail of an African tribe, the Lemba. They claim ancient Israelite ancestry and could just be one of the lost tribes of Israel. We are original Hebrew. Their oral traditions speak of a great journey through Africa and of the great stone cities that they left along the way. I'm on my way to see one now. The city of stone I'm going to is called Machema, and it's only a few kilometers down this road. Not many people know about this place. In fact, it's hidden on a huge cattle ranch, and I've had to get special permission to explore it. It's very rarely visited, even by archaeologists. I'm hoping it still has some clues to the Lemba story. Can I go? Hello. Hello. Hop on in. To help me make sense of it, I've asked historian Dr. Magda LaRue to come with me to the site. She's been studying the Lemba for years and has just published a book on the similarities between their social customs and those of the Old Testament Israelites. So Magda, there are specific parallels between the, the religious practices of the Lemba today and the religious practices of ancient Israelites. Definitely. They've got remnants of an ancient type of Israelite religion. So in a way, wow. they conserve this very special yeah. ancient type of religion. It's like old religion. school religion. Yes. But how do they maintain that religious, that religious identity 
how did they keep it intact for so many years when there was this long journey from Israel down to South Africa? You see, that's, that's, the, the, that's a question. I think it's by means of the, the oral traditions. But they kept themselves separate from other groups. They lived with other peoples, moving with them, migrated southwards. Oh, that is one of their salient characteristics, that they, is that they keep up their culture. They just live it. Mm -hmm. you know, is this and, cultural uh, resilience the key to the Lemba's survival during their epic journey across 4,000 miles of land and sea? And could there still be any physical evidence here at Machima which supports the Lemba's claim to having made the journey?